Okay, in this video we're going to look at brain plasticity. So plasticity, it might be a bit of an odd word that you wouldn't normally associate with the brain, but in this case it really just means um, that we're looking at how um, the brain can change and how it can be moulded, a bit like plastic, you can mould plastic to the shape that you want. And similarly we found that the brain is not set um, the way that it is, it can change in response to the environment um, and experience across the entire lifespan. So our brains can change at any part of our life. Um, the biggest change occurs just after birth where we very rapidly develop new connections. As infants we are constantly exposed to new experiences and by the age of about two and three years old we've got about 15,000 connections which is huge. After this point we tend to lose connections because our brain operates um, a use it or lose it system. So if you use a particular skill or a connection, that connection will be strengthened. And if you don't use it, then it tends to weaken and weaken. Now, that doesn't mean we can't change our brains as we get older. Um, learning new skills is uh, something that can happen across the lifespan, and our brain does adapt in response to that. The most famous example is probably the black cab drivers in London who, following um, acquisition of the knowledge where they've learned all of the road names and all of the routes around London, their hippocampus is physically larger due to all these increased connections than that of an average person. Um, now, although our brain does change on a day-to-day -day basis, what we're going to look at it um, in connection to is that of functional recovery after brain damage. So functional recovery just means you're recovering function. This would probably be a day-to-day -day function, uh, maybe motor function or speech or language. And um, once somebody's been brain damaged, there are ways that the brain can um, repair some of the connections or use this idea of plasticity to regain function that has been lost. So after brain damage, uh, one of the ways that you can um, develop recovery or help recovery of a particular brain region that's been damaged is through the idea of axonal sprouting. So if we imagine um, this, this is just uh, one series of neurons within the brain and we'll imagine that the axon and um, maybe the cell body and next axon of this particular setup has been damaged in some way. So axonal sprouting, remember the axon is the, the long tubey bit that relays the message, um, is when new axons are grown. So if a cell body is healthy, then it can um, sprout new axons. If it's not, then neighboring neurons um, might sprout new connections in order to take over the function that's been damaged. So it's a bit like, um, I think a good example is if you need to get from place A to place B and some of the roads have been closed, you just find a way to go around the edge. And it's a similar thing when we look at axonal sprouting. Now this can cause complications. Um, it could be that if uh, the neighbouring neuron which has sprouted this new connection is actually responsible for a different purpose, it might be that the resulting response also gets complicated. So again, if we use an analogy for this, maybe the postman's gone off, sorry, the milkman's gone off sick and the postman decides to take over um, the function of the milkman in delivering your milk every morning, it might be that you open your front door and you find a bottle of milk with a letter stuffed in the top of it, just because those two functions have got in some way confused. A second way in which the brain can help to recover itself after damage is by using the same area on the opposite side of the brain. So if we take the example of Broca's area, so we know it's um, sort of towards the front in on most people, the left hand side of the brain. If that area became damaged, it could be that the equivalent area on the other side would take over that function. A third way in which function could uh, possibly be recovered in the brain is through the idea of denervation supersensitivity. So this is when a particular neuron is damaged. Um, Neurons that carry out similar jobs are stimulated to a higher level in order to compensate. Um, so it's sort of stimulating maybe a different neuron at, at twice the level in response to a damaged neuron. Now this can also cause problems because some messages you, you don't want that to be increased. For example, pain. You don't want the, the stimulation of pain to be increased. So it can cause problems in those areas. Now, if we want to help the um, functional recovery of the brain, one of the ways we can do this is by increasing brain stimulation. So if we think in a normal brain, 
you've got input from the environment which causes stimulation, so electrical stimulation within a brain. You also have in this diagram in the right hemisphere there, the left hemisphere is also causing stimulation. So in a normal healthy working brain you've got input from the environment which increases the level of stimulation. You've also got input from the left hemisphere which increases stimulation, which means the level of stimulation in the right hemisphere overall is very, very high. Now, if we imagine that the left hemisphere is then damaged, as you can see, you then only have input from the environment. So the overall level of stimulation in the right hemisphere is much, much lower, which could mean that um, the job of the right hemisphere becomes much, much harder. One way we can address this is to artificially then increase the level of stimulation in that right hemisphere. So using electrodes to add to the electrical stimulation, which is naturally there from the environment. And as a result, the stimulation in that healthy hemisphere increases and function is recovered. So go and have a look at the pre-reading if you want a bit more detail on brain plasticity and functional recovery. And before coming to the lesson, make sure you can explain what we mean by the term plasticity. Explain the three different ways that functional recovery of the brain can occur and explain how we can help promote functional recovery in the brain.